Right, uh, my name is Joseph Bong. Uh, my my <coughs> actual name that was given to me by my father was Gator, G A T U O R. I'm from Sudan. I was born in 1980. I'm one of the last boys who came to the United States in 2001. Um, my background is story actually. Uh, I love my parents when I was 11 years old and the reason was because of the civil war that had happened in Sudan between the rebel and the government. Uh, <coughs> I love my parents in 1989. I went to Ethiopia working by food. It took us almost three months to reach Ethiopia. And on the way, it was really a hard life for us. We don't have no water, food, and we walk with a bar food without shoes, without enough clothes too. And we've been in Ethiopia for uh, the camp called Boma. We've been there for almost three months, and then after that, the Ethiopian government and the rebel, you know, break out the war, and then we have to come back to Sudan. And from there, when we came back to Sudan, the government, the northern government, with the Sudan government, start bombing wherever we, we stop, the government would bomb the place and then we move on until we reach to, uh, to Kenya. In the camp, we've been there for nine years, in the camp. In the camp, actually, it was a little bit better for us because it was the first time for us to go to school. The UNHCR provided us the education with the food and we have a little clinic that is really far away like about 30 miles and when you are sick you have to walk by foot all the way down to the clinics and it's <coughs> we don't actually have a, a qualified doctors that uh, can really find out what is wrong with you just a survival uh, clinic that we have to survive. Like you have a headache, they, they, yeah, they, that's, those are the, the sickness that they, they can't be able to treat. But the, the major sickness they cannot be able to do. In 1997, I was really very sick in Kakuma refugee camp. And I've been with, I, it was like a diarrhea. But luck, most of it was because of lack of blood and we don't have a, a, a clean water and I can't say that's the cause of it and it took me about a month and a half, it was almost near to death actually. And then finally when, they, when the UNHCR see that I was really very sick, they took me to the hospital. You know, they had met me there for, you know, for about a week and a half. And I was okay. We brought him back to the camp. And <coughs> then when we were in the camp, we start, you know, going to school. Some of us finish uh, uh, from poor labor. I don't know how they call it here. It's the high school. Yeah, high school. And some of us were around there. They, some of us did not finish uh, from four. Like myself, I didn't finish. From finished primary school and I went to form one. That's where I stopped uh, because uh, <coughs> because of the you know sometimes the, the education in Kenya is, is about how you are, you know about your house when you are always sick or a situation control you sometimes it's, it's not really easy for you to go to school but some of the boys 
manage to you know to get used to that situation. In 1998, the UNHCR and United States, I think plus the the rebel leaders, decided to think about the about the Sun Sudanese young generation who are just living in the camp have no future and they have nowhere to go. What can they do for them? And they came up with uh, this program that they will take them to the United States in order for them to have a good education, a good future. Then the UNHCR came first. And, uh, <coughs> A friend that trust and like I don't want to want to go to United States. United States is this and this and this because we are we don't have no flu but United States. Uh, we start the process by you know filling out application. Uh, stated uh, you know on that time we don't actually know our age. And then from there we just guess you know guess. I think this should be my age, I might be like this and this, we don't even, because when we were born, we don't go to hospital, you just born at home at the rural areas, you don't have to worry about doctor, you know, until you grow older, we just use, you know, the traditional medicine or something, and that's why we didn't know our exact age, then we got those age, like I said I was 21, I was 20, I was 21 actually, 21. That's what the age that I came up with. I'm not really sure if that is really at that age. Then we start the process. Uh, after after we start the process, the UNHCR will call you for the for the orientation. The orientation was conducted by the by the IOM. The IOM is the international organization in migration. After we're done with the orientation, you have to be called by the IRS for the interview. And the interview, the main one that they want is really what is going on in Sudan. What makes you to leave Sudan? What makes you to end up in Kenya? And it was not all of the lost boys who, who passed or who came to the United States. Some passed fell too because they, they might think what happened was a tribe, between the tribal. When you say that um, my enemy is Dinka or somebody else who was in San Sudan, you're going to pay, you know. But my interview was really uh, different from the rest of the Lost Boys. They didn't ask me about what is going on in, this, in Sudan. What they asked me was, the, you know, when we were in the camp, uh, during the Christmas time, uh, somebody came and bombed the, you know, the, the church while people were praying inside the, the church. They they asked me, "Do you think who, who who bombed the church? Who killed the people? Do you think it's a it's a Dinka? Dinka is one of the tribes in South Sudan, or you think it's the government came all the way down to Kenya?" Said, I can't say that. I'm, I'm not really sure who did that. But I can't say it's a Dinka. Dinka, they are not my enemy. It might be them or somebody else. And then from there, you know, I get worried. I thought I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pass because it was very unusual than anyone interview. Why do you think they asked you those questions? I don't really know. They just brought it up, but I, I don't know why they asked me about that. So they didn't even take that long. When they asked that question and I answered it, I said, no, I don't have no clue about who owned the, the, the church. Then they said, okay, your, your interview is over. And then from there, they called me after, after a month to pick up your letter at the compound, UN compound. I went and picked up my letter. I was really very, <laughs> very scared before I opened the, you know, the envelope. Then when I opened the envelope, I was surprised, like, you know, you passed to go to the United States. I was like, oh God, thank God. 